Hello, lovely people, and welcome to another Galactic Mayan Astrology Report. This is a forecast for Sunday the 20th of October and the 13 days that follow that. So if you've tuned in with me before, you will already be aware, but just so you know, my name is Jyoti and I work very deeply with the Galactic Mayan calendar and every 13 days I post a little forecast that gives insight into the 13 day process, aka wave spell, that we are moving into within that framework. So every 13 days we begin a new evolutionary journey, which is cool because it means that we keep refreshing. I'm a little bit snotty, so excuse me. <sighs> so the previous wave spell, the previous archetype that we were journeying with was the yellow human and the yellow human was this beautiful experience of moving between or through what it means to be a human and we can like hang out in the fucking shadow shit of that and be like to be a human is to be a victim to be trapped in this prison world or it can be to be a human is to be awakening consciousness to be a human is to be a soul in a in a light body to be a being that can choose to align with the synchronistic timeline. And now on Sunday the 20th, we move into the energy of Red Serpent. But before I tell you about that, I'm so fucking excited. So a few years ago, I burst something called the Cosmic Clock. And it was basically my life's work with the Galactic Mind Calendar. And <clears throat> it was incredible. It was like this 20 day online container. And for probably about a year, maybe even longer than that, I've been feeling like I want to do it again. But I've been through a big transition recently in the children's project that I birthed and I have stepped back from that. It's now alive and kicking and it doesn't need me anymore. And that means that I can return to my mystical position in the world, which is definitely where I am the most nourished and... I've got, got cool things to share. So, so yeah, from the 25th of November, which is the first, we're, we're moving through the Yellow Seed Wave spell, which is so fucking exciting. Yellow Seed is like one of the, my favourites. It's got 10 back-to-back -back portal days and it's this real opportunity for us to be seeding new realities inside and out. And it's about Christ consciousness and it's, yeah, it's wonderful. So it's one of the most powerful times in the whole spin. And we're going to be coming together for 20 days and within the Cosmic Clock course, basically it's an initiation into all things Galactic Mind Astrology, Galactic Mind Calendar. So we look at the archetypes, we look at the wave spells, we look at the tones, we look at figuring out your signature, figuring out the signature of people around you, figuring out relationship signatures. And then we look at, you know, what it means to be living in rhythm with the 13 tone, with the feminine, and how we can anchor ourselves to the synchronistic timeline, along with lots of galactic history initiation, so that we can really locate ourselves in, you know, soulful perspective of reality. And alongside that, there's six ceremonies online, live ceremonies. Now, the previous time that I ran the course, I invited some guest teachers on to hold the ceremonies. But this time, I think because I've been through so much in the past year, I'm so juicy. I'm ready to, to really, yeah, share some really powerful, deep ceremonies. So like one of them focuses on like being the star that we are and really activating our star seed DNA. And another one is about planetary service and, you know, what it is that is our, our flavour and how we can show up to the world. And there's lots of opportunity for sharing. There's an online container. And to kind of birth it, I've also rebirthed my website because, again, you know, I've been so focused on this project for children and I've been really needing to be there in a very third dimensional way. So it's like this really interesting like rebirth, recalibration that I'm kind of going through right now. So my website's below, all the information about the Cosmic Clocks there and you can sign up for it. And I really feel like you should. We've already got like loads of people that have joined up that kind of did it last time. Um, and if you did do it last time, you'll have got an email from me with a discount. And I'm just blabbering loads here. Um, but I'm really excited about it because it's this like return return in a deeper way to who I am and what I bring and yes yeah, so my new website is below as well so have a little look have a little look see if anything tickles you fancy 
<laughs> so now moving swiftly on to the Red Serpent Wave Spell. <clears throat> Red Serpent is cool. You know, I just mentioned the Yellow Seed having 10 back to back portal days. Red Serpent is the other wave spell that has 10 back to back portal days. So as we approach the center of our nine month human evolution spin, our nine moon 260 day human evolution spin, as we approach the central 20 days, the 20 days leading in and the 20 days leading out both have these 10 back-to-back -back portal days. And portal days are essentially like supercharged moments in human reality where if we choose to, we can utilize those windows to transform who we are and what we bring and activate, activate ourselves. So the Red Serpent Wave spell that begins on Sunday the 20th includes these 10 back-to-back -back portal days. And it is a really profound wave spell. It's a really beautiful 13 day process. So the Red Serpent essentially is about like sexuality, sensuality, Kundalini energy. And, you know, on the planet, these energetics have been so fucking distorted and they are completely aligned to our empowerment. So it's interesting that we move from the yellow human wave spell that was this like, what does it mean to be a human into the red serpent, which is this like deep, because, you know, to create, to create new life, it's, it is a sexual experience. It's a sensual experience. And that is what this reality is based upon. Yet due to all the suppression, the suppression of that energy has then created so many distortions in the field around the connecting to that life force energy. So <clears throat> there are other pieces of the serpent and it's interesting that every time we go through a spin, obviously like I do a red serpent wave spell or I do a whatever archetype wave spell reading. And each time, depending on where we're at as a collective, a different aspect of the archetype wants to be speak spoken to. So, you know, the other pieces of the red serpent, you know, there's this energy of, of shedding, of releasing but it's liberating. It's about liberating ourselves from limitation. Snakes shed the skin from their eyes and like tackle my partner. He had a snake and he was telling me about like the shedding process. And he said that he could always, he could always tell when it was going to go through a shed because its eyes started to go a bit blurry. And it was like the, the, the skin of its eyes was like the first marker. And I've spoken to this before because I remember a teacher of mine years ago, oh yeah, from Red Earth in Spain, sharing about that snakes shed the skin from their eyes. And it always hit me of like, okay, so this is this process for us, this red serpent process is also about like the shedding of our perspectives you know, in order to liberate ourselves, primary thing is perspective, is mindset, is the, is the shedding of the old, cloggy, not aligned with abundance, disempowered ideology and perspective. And, you know, again, as a collective species, we have been so deeply indoctrinated into disempowerment and lack and almost hypnotized into it. And, <clears throat> It's on us to change that. It's on us to shed that. So the first piece of Red Serpent, the shedding of perspective, the shedding of belief system, the shedding of limitation. And, you know, all the energy that's been coming through recently is really about the releasing of the victim and the stepping into empowerment. And so we can kind of carry that through into like, OK, in this 13 day process, there will be opportunity for me to let go of limiting beliefs that have been fucking me up for years. But then the big piece that is really present is around this, this liberation of sexuality. And, you know, I think <clears throat> I spoke to it a while ago in terms of, yeah, the kind of the unconscious sexuality that is present on the planet and the like the hungry, this energy has sort of taken over me and I must submit to it and ravage. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But if we think about that energy as like creative life force, is that the ideal channel for us to be utilizing that energy unconsciously and ravishing? 
is that how we want to create in the world is that honoring of the feminine and yes yeah, sometimes you know that might be super aligned but the majority of the time it's not so this force that is within us if we can make that conscious if we can support that to become conscious if we can sit in the sensation and this is what you know, I did <clears throat> some tantra training a few years ago with Homo and Mukto from Brazil. And they're like initiated on the, the Osho circuit of tantra. And within that branch, it was really essentially about how do we sit in sensation and allow it to be? without pushing it, without being dragged by it? How do we expand ourselves to be able to hold sensation? And this then links to emotion. It links to every kind of sensation that we have as a human that we really struggle <clears throat> to experience. So much of the suppression that's alive on the planet is due to us not being able to handle our emotions, not being able to cope with the sensation that that opens so when we start to use our sexual energy and work with our sexual energy in that way we're also opening our capacity to hold all kinds of sensation now as we allow that opening to that energy because this is another part of it right you know if we've been really suppressed and you know if we've had lots of sexual trauma or shaming or whatever it is which I think you know the majority of us have had and I think being you know in the UK as well the culture here is so fucking suppressed when it comes to expression of juiciness let's say it's been a very cold culture so to to even open that and be witnessed in that you know and I don't I'm not saying that you need to be parading around the streets in that energy but just to to open ourselves to it even without being witnessed by another is loaded you know there's a lot of different constructs that have really brought us away from the body and essentially the red serpent energy is wanting us all the red signs are about the body are about the the awakening of the body the opening to the body wisdom the red earth is more the embodiment. The red serpent is more, you know, the sensual, sexual energy. Now, you know, the serpent, if we look at the serpent as an archetype, the different threads of the serpent throughout all cultures are fascinating. You know, there's this, kind of, this link to the Kundalini energy. So this notion that we have this coiled serpent at the bottom of our spine. And as we clear our chakras, as we open ourselves, the serpent moves from the root up to the crown, activates our pineal gland and we're boof. We're in the like of life force, yeah? Often what I feel happens because a lot of us have played with drugs. It's like we blew our fucking crown open and then the rest of our chakras are like, what the fuck is going on? Like the serpent just like was popped into the fucking brain and didn't activate the rest of it. So we've been like, fuck me, we've awakened the wrong way around here. Shit the bed. So we've got that piece of it. It's like Kundalini activation. And, you know, the Kundalini is the rise of, yes, sexuality, but it's our, it's our empowerment. It's our embodiment. It's the movement of life. How able are we to like follow the movement of life, to follow the current of energy? We've got the serpent that was Lilith in you know gnostic adam and eve vibes the notion is that prior to fucking eve we had lilith lilith wasn't created from adam lilith was created on her fucking own so there were these two humans man and woman that were fucking separate created from the earth god was like yo i'll get i'll create two things adam was like submit to me bitch Lily's like fuck you no I'm not going to submit to you and walked out she walked out of Eden she's like fuck this I'm not going to be in a free situation where I have to submit so she buggers off but then I'm like shit we need another birdie don't we 
We'll take it from Adam. That'll definitely mean that she'll submit. But then Lilith comes back as the snake and he's like, yo, bitch, yo, Eve, something's a bit wonky here. Said that you can't you can't eat from this. What, what What's that about? The tree of knowledge. Why can't you know yourself? Why can't you be empowered in this? She fucking eats it. And thus, apparently, original sin is created. The original sin didn't start there, did it? Did it? And, you know, this is kind of the, this is the energy on the planet that we've been working with. So, you know, the, the energy of the snake is also this kind of, this wisdom, this awakening to wisdom. And I can't remember the name of it, but the like, uh, the health thing that's got like the two snakes coiled. It's a, it's a, it's been an image of, of health and healing as well. Like the, the, the healing arts. And a lot of the time, what are we doing? within the healing arts we're working energetically and what is kundalini energy it's energy you know so it's it's about and what is sexual energy it's energy so we're working with life force energy the red serpent energy is about life force energy how able are we to allow life force energy to move through us <clears throat> and <clears throat> how can we utilize life force energy sexual energy kundalini energy truth energy to support us to awaken how can we lean into the current to support us to awaken as opposed to falling asleep to the current and letting the current just do whatever the fuck it wants how can we ride the dragon how can we allow ourselves to take the reins of this energy that is moving through us <clears throat> So within this 13 day process, the invitation, the opportunity is yes, shed, release, let go, return to the earth, belly to earth. What is it? You know, I think this is another part of the red signs. It's like, what is it to be a creature of the earth? Let go of the fucking super association with humanity and whatever we've decided humanity is that's got lost unless you manage to refine it and be like, oh yes, I'm a spiritual being in this body. We arrive at the red serpent and it's like, okay, <clears throat> what does it mean to be a creature of the earth? If a human is a creature of the earth, what does that mean? You know, in this primary drive within humanity to reproduce, to connect, because it's not just reproduction, is it? It's like the, the desire for orgasm is to connect the desire for sex is to connect. We want to, the intention within that is like, wow, we're in separation and we're trying to come back together. And that's what this whole reality is like bursting with all the time. It's like, how do we meet again? How do we come back together again? How do we allow that? But also how do we make it conscious? And, you know, it's a really deep feminine drive and the feminine inside of all of us can hold space for that masculine energy, you know, can support that masculine energy, can guide that masculine energy. But that masculine energy needs to be awakened, you know. So over the next 13 days, embodiment practices, sexuality practices, you know, whether you're on your own or in a relationship, creating some space to slow the fuck down with your own body and allow it to open to you and allow yourself to maybe shed some of the stories that you've experienced or maybe allow it to hang out my te the tantra teachers they would talk about like hanging out in the shallow end of the energy like sometimes we just want to go straight into the depths don't we were like zoom in like fuck yeah but how can we kind of utilize that practice with ourselves or with another of like hanging out in the shallows and letting that like hungry energy open into something else because when you can hang out in it it can open into something else and what that then does in the ability to utilize that sexual energy because it's incredible powerful energy that we can use to create that we can use to manifest that we can use consciously if we learn to harness it and then from there yeah some sex magic what sex magic whatever the fuck you want it to be but know that when you open to that orgasmic energy it is an explosion it is a dart it is a 
it's an awakening and if you can put your intention into that you're utilizing this incredible power that humans share And as I say, came back to back portal days. So it's going to be potent. You might be confronted with things that you need to shed, that you need to let go of. You might have moments of being like, ah, yowch. And that's cool too. It's cool too. But just know that like a big part of the mission is to really not just liberate sexuality, but also to bring it into the heart. You know, like, how do we bring the sacral energy into the heart and then express it through the heart, you know? And how can we bring the heart energy into the sacral? Again, this was a really big part of the teachings that I received. You know, it's like the sacral and the heart have almost been operating separately, particularly in sexuality. But if we can link those chakras, what we're allowing then is for this incredibly balanced, connected open loving force that is awake to move through us and then when we pour that energy into any aspect of our lives bing so have a beautiful way spell check out my new website come join the cosmic clock and i will see you oh one more thing, I'm now on Instagram. I've taken over the Total Futures page. So Jyoti Offerings is on Instagram. I am sharing little bits of Galactic Mind Astrology on the regular, so follow me. And yeah, check out my website. I love you. Have a beautiful... Oh, my mouse will stop working. Have a beautiful way, spell darlings. Bye-bye-bye-bye.